How's it? Welcome back to Mech 101. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the benefits of building a frame before actually making your mech, and some fundamental things you may need to know before building a mech. Now, when I say frame, what I'm referring to is the kind of skeleton of the mech you want to make. So it will be before the final build, you'll have something like a, a sketch. If we had to liken it to art, you would first begin with a sketch, with your planning of what you want the piece to look like before you actually begin. That is what I'm referring to when I say frame. It is the sketch of how you want your mech to look. Get ready for a time lapse! Now this frame right here I've cobbled together in 10 minutes and you can see it alone looks pretty good and with further detail, further sculpting and cutting away of the squares this could be a really nice looking mech. Now I'll show a time lapse of how quickly I built it but just for you to know it is not that difficult to build the frame of a mech and it's better to start with the frame that way you can work on bits and pieces you aren't going to just build a tiny toe quit playing for a week and then come back and not know what you're doing this you can you've got an entire guide of what you want your mech to look like you can you can go away for a week you can come back and you can just gaze upon the frame and see ah oh yes this is what i want it to look like should i always be using legs when i make my mech move you don't have to make your mech move with two legs there are countless other ways to do that how about a more animal looking leg pattern what about something more complex? Maybe I just want regular legs for my mech. What if I wanted to do four? Maybe I don't want any legs at all. Maybe I'll do tank tracks instead. Ooh, what about wheels? Or maybe just one big wheel. With that tiny showcase, we now know that we have plenty of different ways to actually make our mech move. We aren't limited to just two legs like logic would assume. And I think that is important to note. The mech that you build isn't actually limited. You don't have to give it a constraint. You can build it how you want to. You can give it giant arms with twig legs. Although, for your first mech, I would really recommend taking a more humanoid looking leg approach because then you can just load up the starter mech, go to the frontier, and you can just copy and paste all of this logic onto your mech and you've got a walking animation just set for you. You can customize it, you can make it take one giant leap, you can make it take tiny footsteps. It's all there and it's all annotated for you. Hold on, important info coming up. Now you don't actually have to build your mech all in one piece. You can actually break it up like I've done here. The reason for that is because with all the servos, they'll actually pull each other together like so. You'll see, despite my mech being fragmented, it all just connects once I activate. How about some torso frames? Alright, now here I've got three different frames here of mech torso. So here we've got your stock standard, you've got your head above your shoulders, you've got the big burly chest, shoulder pads. You'll find most mechs be rocking this. Now we've got here a more curved shoulder pad, we've got a head indented into the torso, not something you usually see, but it is a bit more armored. And you can also find the third. Now this one is a lot more blocky than the other two, so this one is easy to recreate for beginners, you'll find it easy to detail, and well you can see the head at the front here just sticking out. Not not as good an idea to put your chair in here. Now, each of these three were made out of simple blocks as you can see just this one there's been maybe one use of the rotate tool this is primarily rotate tool and this too but if you just place blocks around you'll get something like this and <laughs> I'll show an image up on screen now of what this turned into and well you can see just that simple frame and you can turn it into so much more it would probably be a good idea if I gave you examples of where I used frames in my builds. 
No way, would it actually? Here we've got my latest mech, you can see it looks amazing. But, if you look really closely, you can see that this resembles one of the torso frames I showed you, the really boxy looking one. And you can see that, with time and detail, I've made it look incredible. Now, I'm not expecting your first mech to be this level of detail, this is the culmination of at least seven years of mech building over time. But, you can see how the basic frame was there, and it, this is just all added on to that. I'll p hopefully, hopefully the editor me will put a picture of how it looked beforehand. Maybe you didn't like that example. How about another? How about a better example? This is my latest mech. You can see that its torso is the exact same as my speed build and the one of the examples I've shown. But you can see that I've cut off a lot of the fat. I've made it my own. I've slowly just honing away. You can see elements of the frame still here. The hands, for example. The legs, the entire bottom half is slowly just being carved away as I add detail. And you can just see <laughs> elements of that frame still there. But I'd call this a really good example of turning the frame into something, something really nice. Alright, that's been this episode of Mech 101. See you later.